Standard 5th, Subject EVS 1, Chapter 21, Busy at Work, Our Internal Organs. Dear students, processes like respiration, digestion go on inside the body continuously with the help of certain organs. Let us learn something about these processes and the organs that carry them out. We shall begin with respiration. We need air, water and food to live. It is necessary for the body to get a continuous supply of oxygen. So, we need food, water, air, sunlight for our survival. We get this oxygen from the air through breathing. That is why we breathe continuously. In our body, there are organs that carry out the work of respiration. The diagram here shows our respiratory organs. When we inhale, the air from outside goes into the trachea and through its branches into the lungs. In the lungs, these branches divide further into smaller and smaller branches. At the end of the last branches, there are air sacs or alveoli. So here in this diagram, you can see the nose, okay, and from here we get the trachea that is the windpipe. Then the air enters the lungs and there are smaller branches in the lungs. At the end they are called the alveoli. Between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity there is an organ like a flexible sheet. Here this. It is called the diaphragm. The diaphragm and its movement. Let's study. When the diaphragm moves down, we breathe in. So here you see the movement of the diaphragm here. It moves downwards. That time we breathe in. And the incoming air fills the alveoli in the lungs here. When the diaphragm moves upwards, so here in the second image you can see the diaphragm is moving upwards. Air in the lungs is pushed out. And that is how we exhale. So this is the movement of diaphragm related to our breathing. Now let's learn about exchange of gases. When the outside air reaches the alveoli, the oxygen in it passes into the thin blood vessels around the alveoli. With the blood, it is carried to all parts of the body. At the same time, the carbon dioxide that is brought by the blood from all parts of the body enters the air in the alveoli. When we exhale, the carbon dioxide is also given out with the air. So you can see, when we breathe in, oxygen is given into the blood cells and when we breathe out, the carbon dioxide that is brought by the blood is given out. In this way, an exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide gases takes place in the alveoli. Do you know, dust and smoke particles may be present in the air in the atmosphere. There may even be disease producing microorganisms. They are harmful for the body. The inner lining of the respiratory organs has fine hair like structures called cilia. On this inner lining, there is also a layer of a sticky substance called mucus. The dust and smoke particles stick to this substance. Thus, the harmful substances in the air cannot reach the lungs. Now, let's learn about the effects of smoking. If one keeps smoking over a long period of time, the toxic substances in the smoke collect in the respiratory tract. As a result, the air that enters the lungs is not sufficiently purified and the impurities in the air begin to accumulate in the lungs. As a result, the efficiency of the lungs is reduced. The likelihood of getting diseases of the lungs increases. Here you can see the strong and healthy lungs of people who don't smoke. Whereas those who smoke, their lungs are damaged very badly. The solid particles in the tobacco smoke from the cigarette or BD form a sticky layer inside the alveoli. This reduces the amount of oxygen supplied to the body. In addition, some toxic substances in the tobacco also enter the alveoli. 
दिस इल इफेक्ट्स लीड टू द डिजीज ऑफ रेस्पिरेटरी ऑर्गन्स इंक्लूडिंग लाइफ थ्रेटनिंग डिजीजेस लाइक लंग कैंसर सो इट इज वेरी बैड वी हैव टू अवॉइड और क्विट स्मोकिंग सो वॉट इज पैसिव स्मोकिंग If there are people around us, like you can see in the picture, a girl is covering her face and a person is smoking next to her. So, if there are people around us who smoke, then we may have to face the consequences of smoking, even if we do not smoke ourselves. So that is why there is now a ban on smoking in public places. So you can see nowadays slogans like "quit smoking," "no smoking," "it is against the law to smoke in these premises," means you can't smoke in public places. a new word that is gland what is gland an organ that secretes a certain substance in our body is called a gland now let's learn about digestion let us now learn something about the alimentary canal the digestive organs and their functions so the alimentary canal first alimentary canal includes mouth pharynx esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine rectum and anus the food we eat is digested in our body that is substances that can mix with the blood are formed from the food this process takes place in different parts of a long and flexible tube inside our body this tube is called the alimentary canal right from the mouth it goes and till the end we call it alimentary canal till the anus part this process takes place in different parts of a long and flexible tube inside a body this tube is called the alimentary canal the upper end of this tube is the mouth and the lower end is called the anus even if there is a continuous tube going from the mouth to the anus the shape of this tube is not the same in all its parts you can see in this diagram the shape of this tube beginning from mouth to the anus the shape is not same it's different all over the different parts of the alimentary canal have different structures and functions also these different parts are called the digestive organs certain glands outside the alimentary canal assist the process of digestion so now let's learn about the digestive organs now that you know what is an alimentary canal we we'll learn about digestive organs the process of digestion begins as soon as the food is taken into the mouth so as soon as the food is brought into the mouth the process of digestion begins the teeth tongue and saliva all help to convert food into a soft moist ball called a bolus which is easy to swallow the bolus passes through the esophagus into the stomach the stomach is shaped like a bag as you see here it is shaped like a bag here the food is churned okay into bits and pieces the digestive juices in the stomach bring about some digestive processes at the same time some disease producing germs in the food are also destroyed here in the stomach the food now changes into a thin slurry then it passes on into the small intestine over here this yellowish part you can see small intestine the small intestine of an adult is about 7 meters long the digestive juices in the intestine bring about several digestive processes over here the secretions of some glands also help the process of digestion as a result of all these digestive processes certain substances are produced in the small intestine these are useful to the body and can mix with the blood the remaining substances are now passed on into the large intestine here so what all is useful is absorbed into the blood from small intestine and the remaining substances are passed into the large intestine what happens in the large intestine the large intestine of an adult is about 1 and 1/2 meters okay in length here some of the water in the remaining substances is absorbed into the body so water is absorbed in the body in the large intestine and the remaining substances is absorbed into the body and feces or stools are formed so after the water is absorbed into the body from the large intestine the remaining solid waste gets turned formed into feces or what we call as stool 
the feces collected in the rectum part for some time are later expelled from the body through the anus so this is how the digestion process gets completed do you know a sufficient quantity of water is necessary for the process of digestion to take place properly as well as for the food to keep moving through the alimentary canal if one does not drink enough water one becomes constipated that is one passes hard stool or does not pass it regularly then we feel the stomach pain none of the other task in the body can go on without water the water that is absorbed during digestion is the water that is used for all other processes in the body that is why it is so important to drink adequate quantities of water so we must drink water regularly at regular intervals the upper ends of both the esophagus and windpipe as you see in this image open in the throat next to each other when food is swallowed the windpipe remains closed but when we eat in a hurry the food may enter the windpipe and cause us to choke on it that is why we must not eat in a hurry we must also avoid speaking and eating at the same time do you know if we want healthy teeth we need to look after them every tooth has a covering of enamel which protects the delicate inner parts of the tooth enamel is the hardest substance in a body but if we do not keep our teeth clean even this enamel corrodes and teeth decay and we have the problem of toothache so we must regularly take care of our teeth while having our meals we must we enjoy many different tastes and flavors we sense them using our tongue and nose but sometimes we find that a food item tastes or smells bad it may be because the food is spoiled one should pay attention to such changes in food in case the food has really gone bad one can avoid eating it otherwise we may get stomach upset okay now systems in the body you have seen how several organs work together to bring about respiration like the nose trachea and pipe lungs diaphragm if even one of these organs does not function properly the process of respiration will not be completed a group of organs which work together to carry out a function of the body is called a system so the respiratory system is formed because of all this group of organs working together thus the nose trachea lungs and the diaphragm together make up the respiratory system what about the energy for the body as a result of respiration oxygen enters the blood in the body and spreads to all parts of the body substances formed in the process of digestion also mix with the blood and reach all parts of the body of these some substances act as fuel for the body when the oxygen in the blood reaches the different parts of the body it helps the slow burning of these substances giving energy to the body the body uses this energy to carry out all its task so this is how eating food obtaining energy is all related to one another now let's learn about circulation of blood the blood carries the oxygen obtained from the air and the energy giving substances in a food to all parts of the body but what keeps the blood flowing you know that the heart continuously contracts and relaxes for this very purpose a network that consists of tubes or vessels that carry blood away from the heart and those that bring blood back to the heart is spread through the body the process of keeping the blood flowing through all parts of the body is called blood circulation apart from the oxygen blood carries innumerable other substances from one part of the body to another all the time that too is made possible by the circulation of blood the heart and the network of blood vessels together form the circulatory system as long as we are alive the process of blood circulation goes on continuously day and night the nervous system the functions of the respiratory circulatory and digestive systems are vital for the body they have to be carried out ceaselessly vital means very important and ceaselessly means continuously so there are some tasks that we carry out only when we live only when we like for example speaking running studying playing etc is carried out only when necessary 
you have learned that coordination means paying attention to all the different functions and ensuring that they all occur at the right time and in the right manner maintaining this coordination is the function of the brain there is a network that connects the brain with all the different parts of the body this is a network of the nerves that carry messages to and fro between the brain and the parts of the body the brain and the network of nerves are together called the nervous system the nervous system functions to coordinate all our bodily functions so like this we have learned about the respiratory system the digestive system the nervous system and also the circulatory system do you know drinking alcohol has many ill effects on the body it affects the nervous system leading to loss of control over the movements of the body and lack of coordination that is why it is dangerous to drive after drinking alcohol if one keeps drinking alcohol for a longer period of time it causes ulcers on the inner lining of the digestive organs it can also seriously affect the functions of the liver and kidneys so along with quit smoking quit alcohol is also a slogan very important for living a healthy life other systems in the body we have learned something about the respiratory system here in the first diagram you can see the respiratory system the digestive system then the circulatory system and the system that coordinates the functions of all the systems the nervous system besides these there are several other systems in our body for example the skeletal system gives support and shape to the body and protects the important organs inside it and in the second image you can see the excretory system the excretory system expels the waste substances that are formed in the body the working of all the systems is extremely complex but it is important to have information about them always remember if the function of any of our system is disturbed it affects all the other systems in the body too so what we have learned a group of organs that together carry out some function of the body is called a system so for a system to form there have to be a group of organs to carry out some function then the nose trachea lungs and diaphragm are organs that form the respiratory system the mouth esophagus stomach small intestine large intestine rectum and anus and certain glands outside the alimentary canal are the organs of the digestive system other systems like the circulatory system the skeletal system the excretory system also take care of other important functions of our body the nervous system coordinates all the functions of the body it is related to our brain for us to lead a healthy life all our systems must function smoothly so with this we have completed our chapter hope you have understood this chapter well do read the chapter from your textbook for a better understanding of our internal organs stay safe keep learning and thank you